Now in the previous two chapters, we've looked at in depth, the warrior in the creation of glory and the wizard in the creation of wonder. So this chapter, we're going to go deeper into the ruling will because the ultimate end of the ruling will individuals who want to rule over creation is to bring forth wholeness. And how is that accomplished? By thinking upon creation. The will uses the mind to create an image. Then that image is pressed upon creation, most specifically the heart, so that the heart can then, with that imprint, bring forth emotional expressions that will prompt the body towards action. The intent in all of this work, though, in the creation of the image, in imprinting the image, is to rule over creation. That begins first with the human mind, heart, and body. That's where every soul must first learn. And then, as your skills grow, your mind, heart, and body will express you more effectively, and they will begin to rule larger and larger portions of creation. But the will primarily focuses on the mind, and the end result of this mental work and the creation of imagery is lifting creation to wholeness, to bring all things into a singular whole. That's what the will wants to do, to have all things have a meaning and a purpose and value. And that ripples out through the heart, through the body, and then out into all creation so that all things belong to one whole. So a will's mind directs creation towards wholeness. So as we look a little closer at thinking and particularly how the will thinks upon creation, we realize that there's three kinds of thoughts. And the first is expanding thoughts. These are thoughts for something new, a new terrain, a new relationship, a new part of the kingdom. These thoughts press out from what is currently known and expand the kingdom. At the same time though, before an expanding thought can really go out, you must have an expansive thought, a thought that already encompasses everything in your realm, all your relationships, all your finances, everything that has meaning and purpose in your kingdom. You have to have a thought that houses all of that. And then the expanding thoughts push out that expansive, domain, and then you need a new expansive thought once there's been an expansion, a growth of the kingdom. Then inside the kingdom, you need exclusive thoughts. Each creation inside your kingdom wants to be exclusive. It wants to be unique. It wants to be important. Each person wants to be exclusive in their role and function. So a will, a ruler, gives each part of the kingdom, each person in the kingdom, a specific exclusive place. And that begins with having a thought. You must think, how does this person serve the kingdom? How can they benefit what we're here to do? That helps and aids the expanse, the total kingdom, and that creates the resources, the energy to perpetuate an expansion. So these three work together and it's not a one, two, and three. They all must happen simultaneously. They are a singular expression that the will continually springs forth all three simultaneously. So each thought captures a whole and expands the whole. So let's go deeper then into ruling creation. How does the will rule creation? We're going to start with the ruling man. Now, a man wants to play the role of the creator. So when he, as the will, creates thoughts, he's creating the thoughts to rule for him. He doesn't actually want to do the ruling. He wants his creations to do the ruling for him. So a good example of this in modern government is laws. A masculine ruler creates laws, and then the laws are supposed to rule for him in his stead. And that allows him to play the role of the creator when his creations do the ruling for him. However, the ruling woman is very different. She creates thoughts 
that she is. More particularly, she wants to be an image, a living, moving, breathing image that all creation can see and say, oh, I now can see this woman. I can see this ruler and I want to be like her. Now, why? Because the woman wants to play the role of creation. She is the singular embodiment of all creation in one person. So when you look at a woman, you see how all creation is supposed to work, function, feel, and flow. And the ruling woman takes that a step further. She wants to embody the image of how the entire kingdom is supposed to look. And this is why women in general are very keen on clothing and on shoes, on presentation and on hair. They don't want the kingdom to have their hair and ruling and clothing and all these things, but they want the kingdom to have a wholeness, a conformity to something meaningful. So they present themselves as that image. But this all comes, the ruling man and the ruling woman, this all comes from the ruling Father. There's only one ruler, and that is God the Father. He teaches each ruling man and each ruling woman how to play his role in creation. That's where you learn the ruling arts. So the masculine will creates an image, while the feminine will is the image. Now, lifting creation to wholeness is a lot of work. So in Opening these ideas up, we must step back and consider how much is actually involved in taking on the role of the ruler, similar to how the father rules all things. So as the will creates expanding wholeness, you must realize that at each moment, your kingdom is never complete. Only God has the perfect kingdom. We, on the other hand, are always to be expanding the kingdom. So if you take on the role of the ruling will, you must always embrace the pain that the kingdom can yet expand more. At the same time, you must also continually create a thought that encompasses the entire kingdom as you know it. And you'll be tempted to think that that thought is the perfect thought, that your kingdom has now reached perfection. But the expanding thought will keep pressing and challenging that delusion. So the expanding thoughts, pressing out your expansive thought is a constant pain for the ruler, but this is what you must embrace. Now, to make this even more specific, you must, as the ruler, create a thought for every person in your kingdom, every creation in your kingdom, to give that creation purpose and meaning and a valuable position in the kingdom. If you want to go even further, you want to create each individual's position within your kingdom so that when they see themselves, they see themselves as the most important component of the entire kingdom. Now you say, well, why would you do that? Because that's how the Father creates our position. If you've noticed, your position, your perspective is that you are the central figure in your world. And you are. Why? Because this is the way the Father rules. He gives us each a position, and we view that that is the most important position in the entire universe. And that's exactly the way it's supposed to be. So this is a lot of work to create this kind of exclusivity for every single member, every single creation within your kingdom. However, there can be only one will. Only the Father is the will. Yet, there can be many who play the role of the one will. So it's not wrong for you to claim a strong position that you are the one will. That's what you're supposed to do. But remember, this is just a role that you're playing. You're playing this role for the benefit of creation, for the benefit of the wizards and the warriors around you, and you want to show them, show all of creation, your interpretation of who the Father, the one will, truly is.